Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Clean Air, where we find out more about how clean air can affect the quality process for you and the workplace. I'm your host, Jacob Stewart, and in this episode, we're going to be discussing common indoor air quality issues and filtration options for manufacturing and processing facilities. With me today is Canfield APC's Taylor Morgan. Are you doing all right today, Taylor? Doing great. Beautiful day here in Texas. Good to hear it. So to start things off, can you tell me more about just your position and what you do here at Campville? Absolutely. Thanks, Jacob, for having me. I, I work for Campville uh, out of Texas, where our regional office is. I've, I've been with Campville for over nine years now. Um, I cover Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, and New Mexico. And our our goal is to help customers and clients out with cleaning up their workspace and different manufacturing process. We have a big emphasis on NFPA um, and then also air quality and emissions in and throughout their facility. Different facilities have different processes. A lot of processes we go over, we'll kind of discuss uh, here in this podcast, but thermal spray, abrasive blasting, cleaning metals, welding, pharmaceutical, anything that generates a dust or mist and uh, we help clean the air. All right, sounds good. So starting off, can you tell me more about what IAQ is? Yeah, good question, Jacob. Uh, IAQ, it's it's indoor air quality. It's the indoor air quality within or around the buildings, the structures, uh, especially as it relates to the health and comfort of the building occupants. Indoor air quality, it's the inside air. It, It can affect a person's health, their comfort, and their ability to work. Temperature, humidity, the amount of outside air and mold and other contaminants all play a role in indoor air quality. Um, the health effects from indoor air pollutants may, may be experienced uh, soon after exposure or even years later. So why is IAQ so important? That, that's a good question, Jacob. I mean, everyone thinks about how important clean water is. Let, let's put this into perspective uh, and how important clean air should be to everyone. We consume roughly two quarts of water per day on average. How many quarts of air do you think we inhale every day, Jacob? Best answer I have is a lot, you know. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, a lot. So two quarts of clean water per day on average. Humans inhale approximately about 15,000 plus quarts of every day, uh, of air every day, and most people are unaware of the dangers and risks. We spend approximately 90% of our time indoors. Indoor air quality can be two to five times more polluted than the worst outside air. Airborne contaminants are typically invisible to the naked eye, but can be remain suspended in the air for several hours, if not days. Uh, think about the current pandemic at hand, Jacob, and how we found it can spread. It's through the air. Before the current pandemic, an estimated 5 million workers were required to wear respirators and about 1.3 million workplaces throughout the U.S. And again, this is on average before the pandemic. And my assumption is these numbers have gone up drastically. Now, you brought up the pandemic. Has that, how would you say that overall that that has affected what you do or really has it? I think there's been more of an emphasis on clean air than there's ever been. Mm -hmm. Um, People are more aware of it. People care about their air. They wanna keep social distance in between people. And I know things have changed and things feel like they're getting back to normal, Mm -hmm. but people care about what they're breathing in now and they're more aware of it, uh, which is put a more emphasis on, I care about the air I breathe. Mm -hmm. Clean air is a human right. Absolutely. So how do you know if your facility has an indoor air quality issue? It's it's just pay attention to your surroundings. Um, dust on the floor, rafters, flat surfaces. Are the floors slippery? Are the walls dirty, etc.? cetera? Um, you can easily do an eye test. You see any issues on the floor or surface? Is your vision impaired? Uh, do your eyes feel irritated? Do they itch or burn? And then also, you, I talked about the eye test, but what about the nose test? Do you smell an odor? Do you have any physical irritation to your skin? Those are a few signs that you might, in fact, have an indoor air quality issue. 
And you might be so used to it every day walking into the same facility, but we go in and out of facilities on a daily basis that we don't go into every day. A new facility, it's they're all different. So mm -hmm. sometimes I walk into a facility and then when we leave a couple hours later, I smell my shirt or I still have that smell when I'm leaving the facility. So it, you might be used to it every day because that's all you've known. Right. But a customer, a vendor, a potential client that you're bringing in, they're going to notice because they're not used to it every day like you might be. Right, right. So what else does IAQ affect outside of just the air that you breathe? I'd like to say everything. Here's just, I guess, a few that um, it affects that you're going to notice more often than not. Um, mm -hmm. HVAC systems, your general housekeeping, possibly your employees retention, your manufacturing and process equipment, your control panels, uh, your motors, and even a customer's perception. I guess to elaborate, we can start with like HVAC systems, um, the required maintenance, the energy, the overall performance of those systems. Dust and airborne particulate can get into your HVAC systems and, and it causes them to work harder and less efficient. And the other thing about getting in the HVAC systems is it's recycling the dirty air back into your building. The dust you don't see with the naked eye accounts for about 90% of the dust in the air and it migrates to your HVAC systems. And that can cause poor airflow and can be reintroduced back into the employees or into a nearby office close by. A dust or mist from a manufacturing process facilities can make their way into an office that's nearby environment or even a connected building. Uh, this can come from everything including foot traffic and carpets uh, and through their ventilation systems. Smaller particulate can stay suspended for days and it'll find its way to air moving devices such as your HVAC equipment. This can also lead to more frequent filter change outs, um, more maintenance required on the HVAC systems. You can smell an odor on a condenser uh, and those odors on condensers can breed bacteria and mold creating uh, a musty smell uh, on the heating coils and can be a fuel for burning smells. Another item uh, indoor air quality can affect is just your general housekeeping. The particulate in the air, it can cause respiratory problems such as allergies or illnesses in workers. The dust and the mist on the floors and the walls, it's a sign there's dust elsewhere in the building and outside areas such as rafters or ceiling tiles. Again, it's out of sight area, out of sight, out of mind. If the dust on these out of sight surfaces uh, is, is disturbed, it can fall down on production equipment, your machinery, your electrical equipment, and most importantly, your personnel. Good housekeeping reduces workplace injuries and poor IAQ will increase the cost and the frequency uh, of these good housekeeping practices. Jacob, think about this in your home. A layer of dust in your garage, your entryway, your bathroom, or even your kitchen. Um, it could be a quick recipe for a fall. We've all seen it happen and it's caused by the mist and the dust that settles on surfaces, creating right. these hazards. The slip and fall injuries can make up for about 15% of all job related injuries, which accounts for 12 to 15% of all, all workers' compensation expenses. And dust is one of the main causes of those slips. And this is coming from the CDC. According to OSHA, slips, trips, and falls can account for 15% of all accidental deaths and is second only to motor vehicle fatalities. The dangers of these dusts in the workplace can lead to OSHA fines for companies that aren't following these housekeeping rules. Uh, dust can become explosive under the right conditions, and dust on surfaces can lead to an explosion when coming into contact with an ignition source. Um, the Combustible Dust National Emphasis Program was created by OSHA and it helps to deal with this issue. One thing that might not be on the radar necessarily, but maybe it should be, is employees retention. Um, improvements to the workplace environment have proven to better employees' health and, and boost their productivity, which can reduce labor costs and increase employees' retention. Uh, there, there's been some studies that have been performed uh, that show significant improvement in the employees' performance 
and the retention by removing airborne particulates and pollutants through proper air filtration. Providing clean, fresh air supply can offer, offer a positive effect on the health and the comfort of your employees. I know I'm more productive if I've got a clean working environment. I take more pride in my work, right? I, I want to bring customers in. I want to show them. I, and then the other thing is, I, if I'm a, a manager or I'm a, a facility owner, I, I want my employees to be breathing in clean air because I want them to go home safe, right? You, right. you might experience you know, some, some side effects from bad indoor air quality, and some of the side effects might be just temporary. But you got to think about the long-term effects that could show up years after exposure to poor indoor air quality. If the employee doesn't have a safe, healthy work environment, this could ne negatively affect their health and ultimately their retention. We talked about retention, general housekeeping, and the HVAC equipment. Let's talk about the production equipment. Uh, the manufacturing equipment. Some of the production equipment could be control panels, the processing and manufacturing equipment, the motors, etc. Poor indoor air quality can have a negative effect on different equipment throughout this facility. For example, one of the top five reasons motor fail is from dust or mist. Uh, the dust and abrasion causes wear, corrosion, and interference with motor currents. This can lead to the equipment being down and out of production for more maintenance required due to settled dust and mist and airborne particulate. Your equipment downtime can cause loss of production, more labor to repair, get back up and running, and loss of production costs ultimately loss of revenue. This can cause a potential loss of a customer based off a of missing production schedule and delivery dates. Another thing that might be out of sight, out of mind for poor indoor air quality is the customer's perception. You only get one chance to make a good first impression, Jacob. And if I walk into a facility and I wanna be a potential client of a vendor, dirty floors, bad odors, they create a negative uh, perception and potentially can make customers feel a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, an unpleasant atmosphere can also create negative impressions. Your facility's cleanliness is more than aesthetic issue. It could cost your customers doubt in your quality. When your facility is in order, it gives a perception that the customer knows you're in control of your business. You pay attention to detail. You take pride. Your employees take pride in their facility and the work and ultimately the production that they put out. So from everything you've been saying about indoor air quality, like clearly it's important for for health and for safety and for overall value of the product that we produce. And from what you've been saying, it, people don't pay quite as much attention to it. And you did mention that COVID has been bringing more awareness to indoor air quality. Um, what do you think would be a good way to raise more awareness to the importance of indoor air quality? I think if, again, if I could go back to putting it in perspective of, you know, you only drink two quarts of water a day, right? Mm -hmm. I, I want to drink filtered water. I want to drink filtered water or, or a bottle of water and you inhale 15,000 plus quarts of air every day. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you think that contaminated air, I think there's been a bigger emphasis on cleaner air than there ever has. And maybe the pandemic is good in, in that case right. um, to where it's just brought awareness to, mm -hmm. to everything. All right. When you think about the air in your facility, and how it can be more contaminated than the outside air, that should be a reason that you might need to address something within the four walls where your employees and operators. Mm -hmm. and, and you want everybody to go home safe, right? So I think that's what's most important. I know when I go home, I'm going to see my family and I want to play outside with my kids and I want to live the longest life that I can. And again, you might not see symptoms right away, but this could be something that you see symptoms year after um, mm -hmm. you've been exposed to poor indoor air quality. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, moving on, are there any symptoms of poor IAQ? Yeah, of, of course there are some symptoms and sometimes these symptoms can be easily confused with other illnesses. You could have a cold, uh, some sniffles, some allergies, uh, influenza, 
and therefore it can make it difficult to attribute it to indoor air quality issues. Some other symptoms that if you start noticing on more of a day to day basis or a, a week to week basis, like a headache, a coughing or even sneezing, or when you walk into the facility and you notice your your eyes are a little bit irritated, but as soon as you leave the facility, your eye irritation kind of goes away or your headache kind of goes away. You should notice that you probably have a. Is it allergies or is it an indoor air quality issue? I feel better when before I enter the facility or I feel better as soon as I leave then right there you kind of hit the nail on the head you might have an indoor air quality issue at your work environment right some other things you can notice some fatigue uh, some respiratory or, or sinus congestion does it just your chest hurt um, when you leave if there's a mist in the air that you can't see with the naked eye does just my skin kind of itch um, and here's a Another symptom that's a little bit more, I guess, severe, like a vomiting or even a fever. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's easier for someone like myself visiting a facility or even you, Jacob, you walk into a facility you've never been there before and you notice an odor like a, a mineral or a, a mineral o odor or, or a fume or or you notice a possibly a haze closer to the lights. Uh, it, it disrupts your vision and possibly hurts your eyes. Uh, but for someone in that environment every day, again, it's they're used to it. Uh, it, it may be hard to notice. It, if employees notice improvement shortly after leaving the facility, that should be a good indicator. Those are some right. symptoms that are related to poor indoor air quality in the workplace. Um, and again, uh, more severe symptoms can show up years after exposure. Yeah, and I guess another drawback of that would be somebody that has an existing condition such as allergies or asthma that poor indoor air quality could definitely worsen that. Absolutely, it can accelerate it. Mm -hmm. You just mentioned some of the symptoms, but are there any other risks or even workplace injuries that can occur to poor indoor air quality? Yeah, oh yeah, there's, I mean, slip hazards. Uh, if you have any, uh, we talked about general housekeeping. If you have a, an accumulation of dust or mist, it, it can create a slippery surface um, and it can be the cause of workplace injuries. Yeah, a work-related asthma, uh, something you breathe at work causes asthma or makes your existing asthma even worse. Buildup of dust pollutants can lead to fire or explosion risks. The World Health Organization estimates that one out of every eight deaths in the world is due to these conditions related to air pollution. Uh, this includes outdoor air, but it's worth noting that uh, PM1 is getting indoors through ventilation systems. Okay, could you elaborate further on what PM1 is? Yeah, yeah, that's actually a good question. Um, a PM1 are extremely fine particulates with a diameter of fewer than one microns. And put one micron in a perspective, uh, their size is 70 to, 70 to 100 times smaller than the diameter of a human hair. Um, oh, wow. PM, yeah, PM1 particles are, are so small, they can't be filtered by the lungs and they'll cross your, your uh, okay. blood brain barrier. Poor air quality or PM1 can accelerate uh, the blockage of the arteries and again can show up years later uh, mm -hmm. can lead to heart disease. Um, oh wow, okay. The, the EPA has listed respiratory diseases, heart disease, cancer uh, as health effects that may show up years after exposure has occurred. Like that's something that might come as a surprise to some people that just like having poor indoor air quality can lead to something like heart disease or cancer. Like that's not something a lot of people typically think of when they think of that. Again, I think we've just there's been more more awareness brought to how the importance of clean air, mm -hmm. the air that you're breathing in, something that you can't see with the naked eye, mm -hmm. but you bring it in. And what are the effects that it has on you? Right. right. Pandemic, COVID-19, you can't see it with the naked eye, but you can still get it. Mm -hmm. Fumes, PM1, you can't see it with the naked eye, but how is it negatively affecting your health? And especially on a day-to-day -day basis, not just on a one-time occurrence that this could occur, right? I got a few examples of different processes uh, that are for overexposure to fumes from welding, cutting, melting a variety of metals that can potentially uh, cause cancer, uh, nervous systems, or even kidney damage. Um, exposure to some of these mists and, 
and metalworking fluids uh, can enter your body through the breathing, skin contact through cuts and abrasions that they've even been linked to dermatitis, bronchitis, folliculitis, and uh, lung fibrosis and even lung cancer. So we've talked about indoor air quality and some of the negative effects that this could cause. So could you list some specific sources and or processes that can cause poor indoor air quality? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, good question again, Jacob. Um, some specific examples are handling of powder chemicals, uh, chemical industry, pesticide industry, rubber, pharmaceutical in- industry, um, tablet presses, uh, specifically for pharmaceutical industry. You've got, what do we do? We eat food, right? There's food processing operations that include conveying, blending, weighing, and packaging. I'm sitting at my desk right now. It's a wood desk. It's a woodworking process, right? Uh, Cutting of wood, uh, sanding, welding. How do you cut metal? You form it, cut it, you clean the metal, then you coat the metal, all different processes. Everything that you see around you is made somewhere and chances are it probably generates some type of dust or mist uh, in that manufacturing process. Extrusion of plastics and metals, um, poor maintenance on HVAC equipment. Uh, With poor maintenance and less filter change outs, when maybe filter change outs for HVAC equipment are required more frequently, the inadequate fresh air supply back into your office or your building. Um, any process that involves weighing, bagging, bag emptying, dry transport or powdered materials. We talked about bringing in dirty air into your facility from the outside through receiving docks, forklift traffic, dampness and moisture due to leaks, high humidity, metalworking fluids, uh, foundry operations, the cleaning of castings and breaking molds and processes that use abrasive blasting to clean metal surfaces or clean any type of surface, sandblasting, shot blasting, uh, with different materials like steel grit, steel shot, aluminum oxide, uh, or even glass and ceramics manufacturing. Again, there's numerous applications that generate dust, mist, and fumes. And just think about all the things that are made surrounding us, my desk, my computer, Uh, my keyboard, uh, a lot of different applications generate dust uh, during their manufacturing and processing. So with all that being said, how can poor indoor air quality be improved upon at a facility? It can be improved upon with the current setup by increasing the fresh air supply uh, to dilute buildup of inside contaminants. You can identify any locations of the air intakes and exhaust and make sure they're separated appropriately. Um, Verify the building air pressures relative to the outside. Um, Buildings under negative pressure could cause drains, stacks, or exhaust vents to run backwards. Uh, If you have existing dust or mist collection equipment properly being maintained uh, diligently um, and maintain your HVAC equipment. Uh, the PM schedule for that, the filter requirement or the filter change outs for that. Um, and make sure you're using the correct filters for your HVAC equipment as well. Right. So what if the facility doesn't have any dust or mist collection equipment? We, we run across this a lot, Jacob, and some, some people don't even know what technology is available. Um, so I, I think it's important that uh, a facility that does not have dust or mist collection equipment invites an expert in. And when I say an expert, you want somebody that can be a trusted advisor and to partner with you to help correct some of these air quality issues that you have within your facility. Um, A site visit with an expert would would be a first step. Uh, Meeting with the operators, they meet with the plant maintenance managers to determine where the issues lie. No facility and or process is the same. Uh, so it's it's important to rely on an expert or a trusted advisor to partner with. A trusted advisor can help work to help you determine what the best solutions are for your application. Uh, there's multiple control devices to help eliminate indoor air quality issues. Um, some of them being dust collection equipment, oil and mist collection equipment, uh, wet scrubbers, portable welding fume equipment for uh, a single welder. 
the filtration systems equipment is all dependent on the process, the dust, and which filtration option is best for the application. And we talk about that. We also talk about there's different filter medias that might be the best fit for that application as well. Okay. So first step, contact an expert, have a phone call, and then you really want somebody that's going to partner with you and really get in and understand why this is a problem, how long it's been a problem, and what solutions are, are available to address the issues at hand. So you mentioned a little bit about filtration media. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit further on that? There, there's specific filter media options for different dust. Dust collection media is, is typ typically a cellulose or a synthetic based media. Um, some medias, uh, filtration medias have different treatments or can be layered to aid dust release or efficiency. And I think efficiency is very important, right? Medias have different efficiency levels, which will affect the overall performance of the filter media or your dust collection systems and the lifetime and total cost of ownership of these systems. For example, a statically charged dust or a plastic dust, a best fit for filter media potentially could be a carbon impregnated or a grounded filter might be the best fit. A process that might generate sparks, a plasma table, a laser table, or even a welding application. A best fit might be a fire retardant filter media, um, a hydroscopic dust, a sticky, a dust that can absorb moisture, a spun bond material or a, a Duraplete filter could be the best fit or solution for that. Uh, what's nice with Camfill, uh, we've got an in-house dust testing lab at our factory. Uh, we work with the end user. We understand their process. We understand their application and the is issues they have at hand. And then we have a, the in-house lab that we can send their dust in, test their dust, and we do this free of charge because we want to provide the correct solution for their application. Mm -hmm. it, it provides the recommended air to cloth ratio, the recommended conveying velocities, the characteristics of the dust, and the list goes on. So yeah, thank you again for coming by, Taylor. Um, you know, it really sounds like Canfill is, you mentioned having a trusted advisor, and it really sounds like Canfill is one of those trusted advisors. You know, we have the experience, we they have the, the know-how, and they, they really know what they're doing when it comes to indoor air quality. Do you have any further thoughts on that? Oh, absolutely, uh, Jacob. We like to think that we are trusted advisors and even more so. We want to partner with our customers to help them clean up their process and their facility and uh, help make it a safe work environment for their company and their employees so everyone goes home safe. And again, uh, we, we have a we've got an in-house dust testing lab. We want to make sure we are providing the correct solution for their application. And again, the application could be the same, whether it's powder coating or welding or a plasma table, but every application is a little bit different. And that's why it's important that you have an expert from Canfill, a trusted advisor, a partner with your company that can help you clean up your facility and any indoor air quality issue that you might have. Okay, so thank you again, Taylor. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about this topic, simply follow the links in the show notes, which you'll find in the description of this podcast. They include links, contact details, and anything else you might need to get more information. This podcast was produced by Camfill, the world leader in the production and development of air filters and clean air solutions. And you can find out more at camfill.com. Be sure to join us for our next episode and be sure to subscribe to get notifications for future episodes. Until then, I'm your host, Jacob Stewart, and this has been Let's Talk Clean Air. Thank you for listening.